Hello, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. Sound check, sound check. Can anybody, can everybody hear me? Kamusta po ang ating audio? Salamat, salamat. Thank you kung naririnig nyo ako. Can everybody tell me, uh, where are you watching and how are you sa ating uh, enhanced community quarantine? Where are you watching from? Cebu, hello John. John Sport from Cebu. Let's just wait for a few minutes before we start our lecture tonight. It's going to be about five principles that I've learned and I still use for remedial law. Hello, hello Roman from Zamboanga City. Cavite, hi. Cagayan, hello Leslie from Cagayan. Christine Baguio, hi. Tarlac City, secret name. Christel from Albay, thank you for watching. Babis 15, Camarines, hi. Cherries Blossom from Iloilo, hi. Shout out po dito sa Dagupan City, hi Kaizen. Hello bro, namiss ko mga comments mo. Ron, Rifa from, Rifa, Rifa from Manila. QC from Mark Emanuel. Coronadal City. Wow! Iloilo. Hi. Kamusta po kayo dyan? Well, I'm actually quarantined with my family here in Manila and we're doing great. Um, days before they announced yung enhanced, community, yung enhanced community quarantine, I was able to drive to my hometown kung saan hindi pa magulo. In, well, sapat pa. Hindi pa nagpa-panic buying yung mga tao. Panic buying hurts a lot of people. Hello, Paolo from Antipolo. William Jake from Cavite. Hi, Karen! Hello! Kamusta, kapatid? Ma... Mawil from Makati. Hi! Sige, let's give it a few more minutes. Alfred Famoso, hello from Cagayan. Wow, Yukian from Marawi, hello. Uh, I was actually scheduled to go to Marawi as part of my contract with UNDP. I was supposed to teach some youth leaders some animating skills. Just to bond with them, part of being uh, an ambassador for creators for change. Pero hindi ako natuloy. Hello, Mr. Ace from Naga City. Kurt, hi, kapatid. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Irvin, yes, present. Thank you. Hello, everyone. What is my opinion on Coco Pimentel's issue? Wow, loaded question. I think, to a certain extent, it was grossly irresponsible. But I also understand him to a certain extent. Uh, if I can share something uh, during the birth of our daughter... I had a letter f addressed to the hospital director and 
I had a letter addressed to the hospital director and I was assured that I would be able to join my wife sa delivery room. And for whatever reason, I was kicked out of the delivery room. Well, naiintindihan ko rin naman sila. But I was told to stand behind behind a red line. That was very sad for my part. Kasi ang panganganak, wow. It's a game-changing experience. Sige, hi RG from University of Caloocan. Hello, Dino Clark from Bataan. Pasay City, hello, Baguio. Sige, I think uh, we should start. Do you want to start? Yes, no lang sa comments sa chat box. Yes, no if you want to start. I'll just get my notes ready. Audio, do you can can you guys hear me? Okay lang ba? Okay, yes. Hello, Paolo, bro. Kamusta? Sorry, nakatulugan ko na yung chat natin kagabi. Okay, let's start. Let me get my notes ready. Book recommendations, chat mo ulit mamaya, I will answer. Okay? Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Tonight's episode is a special, primarily because I am coming to you live. This is essentially a test broadcast and, it, and if everything goes well, from my end and hopefully on your end as well, then we will probably do more of the same in the weeks and months ahead. The enhanced community quarantine has forced all of us to stay indoors and I want to help you make the most of the downtime. Through live episodes like this one, we will probably cover topics in civil law, remedial law, and let's see kung, kung saan tayo abutin. I also want to share with you some of my experiences along the way. That being said, we begin tonight with some of the key principles that have helped me understand remedial law and specifically, I hear you kapatid, civil procedure. My love affair with remedial law began about three or four years ago and this is how it started. Unicorn kapatid ang tawag sa law student na sobrang promising at nagtatapos ng law school nang walang naibabagsak kahit isang subject. Sobrang bihira lang nila sa law school at posibleng may mga batch na walang unicorn dahil sa taas ng attrition sa law school. Sila min minsan madalas ang laman ng mga class valedictorian. Now in my time, many many years ago, in a law school far far away, I had two classmates. Both of them were supposedly unicorns. Sila yung third year na ay wala pang inuulit ang mga yan. Paboritong tawagin ng mga professor kapag wala nang nakakasagot. They were both very good but to a certain extent, naging intellectual bully na sila. Fast forward to the end of the semester and both of them, Failed civil procedure. Ako naman na nahuhuli sa kanila, I made myself a promise that I will not fail civil procedure. I will do all that I can to pass the course in one take. I disciplined myself 
to sit down for 90 minutes every day, excluding Sunday, syempre, to teach myself civil procedure. Pero pumasa naman ako in my first take, and I probably impressed my professor enough for him to offer me an internship at his law firm. With the correct foundation in remedial law, every other course becomes easier. The law becomes more practical, more actionable, and more tangible. The law no longer becomes something na lumulutang lang sa ere na hindi natin maintindihan. Knowing what I now know, several years later, I think that the proposal to teach civil procedure much, much earlier in the prospectus, gaya ng second year, first semester, I think there is merit in that, kapatid. Kailan nino offer ang civil procedure sa law school nyo? Anong year and semester? Let's see some comments. Kailan nino offer ang civil procedure sa law school nyo? Anong year and semester? Civpro with amendments, yes, we will discuss them. Third year, first sem, second po, second year, se. Second year, second sem. I think karamihan second year, second sem na. Uh, standard pa rin sa ibang law school lang third year, first sem. Taking it right now. Wow. Currently taking. Anong semester? Not responsive. Strike out the answer. I think there are proposals from some law deans na gusto nilang i-offer ang Pro as early as second year, second semester. Yung iba gusto nilang i-push ng second year first sem others are saying first year second semester I think there is merit in that because with the correct foundation sabi ko nga in remedial law every other course becomes easier for example civil procedure ang kadalasang dahilan bakit ligwak ang mga QPI natin na nadidelay tayo pagpasok ng third year or fourth year, depende sa law school. One of the reasons, I think, is that from first year to second year and up until the time we learn civil procedure, pinupurga tayo ng substantive law. With the correct foundation in civil procedure, you will get that framework, that necessary framework, para mas maintindihan mo yung other, other laws. For example, knowing what I now know in civil procedures, specifically as to indispensable parties and necessary parties, mas maiintindihan ko siguro ang essence ng negotiable instruments law na pinagpuyatan daw sulatin ni Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. Kung naiintindihan ko na ang civil procedure noong panahon na inaaral ko yung bearer instruments, at promissory note, siguro mas madali ko sanang naiintindihan ng nego. Going back, substantive laws are laws that grant us specific rights. For example, in your persons and family relations, you will learn that spouses are entitled to support from each other. Parents have to support their children and to a certain extent, ikaw, kapatid, ay liable for support for your brothers and your sisters. From first year to say third year, that is all we really know. Entitled sila sa support. Alam lang natin na karapatan ng isang bata ang makakuha ng sustento mula sa kanyang ama. How then do you bring that support, yung sustento, mula sa bulsa ng tatay papunta sa bata? This is the heart of remedial law. They exist because they lay down the law, the process, and the nitty-gritty of making the rights, the substantive law, into something that's actually useful for people. However, when you encounter problems in civil procedure, all of the facts usually point to one person coming to court because another person has violated one of his substantive rights. If A owes B 200,000 pesos and now A comes to court because B refuses to pay his money, the worst answer you can give your professor is one rooted in substantive law. This brings me to tip number one. The essence of remedial law is the ability to spot issues 
with efficiency and accuracy. If you know the issue or issues, you will find the most accurate answer. In the study of remedial law, never ever give an answer based on substantive law. It's always tempting to answer based on what we know from obligations and contracts. But remember, kapatid, the course is called civil procedure. Underline procedure, process, remedies. Ang hinahanap na sagot sa atin ay nasa rules of court or kaso. This is the reason why so many law students struggle with remedial law. Remedial law is the study of processes. It's the study of how to resolve one or more conflicting claims. It's the study of how we bring the rights we learn from the civil code, from the family code, and turn it into something useful. Tip number two in remedial law, there are usually three sides to the story. The party making a claim ang nagdedemanda or the plaintiff the second is the party refusing the claim, ang dinidemanda, called the defendant. The third party here is the court. This is why almost all of the questions in remedial law umiikot lang sa mga sumusunod. Number one, is the plaintiff correct? If you were the counsel for the plaintiff, what would you do? Number two, is the defendant correct? If you were the counsel for the plaintiff, what would you do? Third, finally, if you were the judge, how will you resolve the case? When you study remedial law, always look at it from the long-term goals of the parties. Halimbawa, if you are the counsel for the plaintiff, your goal should be to turn your client's substantive rights into a piece of paper from the judge that says your client is entitled to so and so. Kung ikaw ay abogado ng minor na bata, dun sa earlier example natin, sa action for support, ang goal mo dapat dito ay makakuha ka ng decision na nagsasabing dapat magbigay si tatay within the first five days of every month ng ganitong halaga. Now, if you are the counsel for the defendant, the tatay, I know this sounds unethical. But your goal should be defense. There are several ways of doing this. You can prove the father has limited means na sobra-sobra ang hinihingi ng nanay or you can even prove to a certain extent na mas mayaman yung nanay. The long-term goal for the defense is not necessarily not to pay. In most cases, not paying means winning but, the law is, but if the law is clear and your client ought to pay, in the first place, dapat naman talaga siyang magbayad, then it is enough that you are able to temper the demands and reduce the amount that your client actually pays. Number Tip number three, I think this is the most important. Kung meron kang isang take home mula sa episode na ito, kapatid, it is this. The strength of a rule is always in its consequence. Ulitin natin. The strength of a rule is always in its consequence. The most powerful rules in the rules of court are those that have the ability to give us an instant win. That will be judgment for the plaintiff or an instant dismissal for the defendant. The strength of a rule is always in its consequence. For example, Rule 4 Rule four tells us that an indispensable party is one whose interest will be affected by the court's action in the litigation and without whom no final determination of the case can be had. Tandaan mo ito ngayon kapatid at babalikan natin yan mamaya. Tip number 4 in remedial law, there are one or more ways to move from point A to point B. Your job, kapatid, is to find the most efficient, least burdensome, and the shortest way to resolve the case. When I taught myself civil procedure, I learned quickly that the rules actually show us the valid moves to play during litigation. It is, in effect, a game of chess. That's why my notebook for civil procedure, at least, is marked as chess theory. There are moves and counter moves. Your job is to study civil procedure in the context of moves, counter moves, and how to counter the counter moves. 
Okay pa so far kapatid? Tip number two. In remedial law, there are three sides to the story. You have your plaintiff, the defendant, and the uh, court. Umiikot lang dun sa tatlo yung tanong. Is the plaintiff correct? What would you do if you were the defendant? How would you resolve the case? Is the judge correct? Mga ganun lang. Umiikot lang sa tatlong yan. Tatlong anggulo lang ang kailangan mong aralin. Tip number three. Is the most important, the strength of a rule is always in its consequence. Tip number four, there are more than, there is, there are always, there are multiple ways to move from point A to point B. Okay pa so far? Let's look at one example where uh, the three the three perspectives will come into play. Okay. If you can write this down, this will be useful. Okay, let's look at one example. A, B, and C are brothers. A, B, and C are brothers. Their sole surviving parent is their father, who also died late last year. The father left them with two properties, sulat, an apartment, Second property, house and lot in Marikina City. Let's assume that the value of both combined is around 9 million pesos. B lives on the house and lot. Si B ay siya rin ang nangungulekta ng renta. Si C naman ay nakatira na sa Brisbane. Maganda na ang buhay niya sa Australia at mukha namang wala na siyang interes sa naiwan ng kanilang ama. Okay, first let's play as the counsel for A. If you are the counsel of A, anong first move natin? Let's see some answers. A, B, and C, magkapatid, naiwanan sila ng 9 million. If you are the counsel of A, let's see your first move. A, B, and C are brothers. They inherited 9 million pesos in properties. Silang tatlo na lang. And yung kapatid si nasa Australia. Not interested in the, at not interested at all sa kanilang estate. Before we determine our first move, let's look at the end game. What is the goal of A? The goal of A. The goal of A we have to assume is to get the most property, the biggest possible share in the shortest possible time. When you look at the problem, pwedeng he can get away with 3 million or 4.5 million. From this objective, we can now determine our first move. The law on succession provides that the first action should be for the allowance and disallowance of the will. Wow, mahabang process to. So skip natin. Meron bang last will and testament si Papa? Pwede yang meron o wala. Leslie Vitales, thank you. Partition po. Partition, partition, apply as admin. Good answer. Sige, let's look at the extrajudicial settlement. Sige, let's look at the answers. Meron bang last will and testament si Papa? Pwede yang meron o wala. Just looking at the broad game from our facts. Wide pa ang playing field at this point. So let's assume na wala. What's our next move? Then we have to file for partition. O paghahati-hatian na natin yung naiwan ng tatay nila. Intestate. Yes. The presumption here is that before we move on to that presumption, let's review the, the end goal. The end goal of A is to get the most property, the biggest possible share in the shortest possible time. The presumption here is that A can get at least 3 million pesos minus estate taxes siguro. If we can get C, yung kapatid nila na nasa Australia to waive his share, 
at hahatiin kay A and B at pwedeng umakyat yung share nila to 4.5 million each. If we can get C to execute a deed of donation in favor of A only, aakyat pa yan ng 6 million. This sounds simple enough and with the right complaint and the necessary documents, prime then ready for court, we can get a piece of paper from the court that states that A is now the owner of 4.5 or 6 million pesos of the estate. Now let's play for the side of B. B is the present occupant of the house and lot. Siya rin ang namamahala ng apartment. Masarap na sana ang buhay ni B. Saka ngayon nang gugulo yung kapatid niya. Let's say that his objective is not to retain everything, hindi naman siya sakim, na aangkinin niya lahat. Pero lumapit siya sa'yo at sabi niya, Torni, yung rentals po ay pinanguhulog ko sa isang utang. Matatapos na po pero kailangan ko lang ng konting panahon. That is the story of your client. Let's assume further na si B ay hindi naman din niya aangkinin yung rental na inaibabayad at ibabayad pa sa kanya. Willing naman siyang makaltas yon sa share niya. From here, let's play for B. What is the long-term goal of B? Anyone? Long-term goal of B. Based dun sa nakikiusap siya na pinanguhulog niya yung rental sa ibang utang. Completely unrelated, disconnected from the present case. What is the long-term long -term goal of B? The long-term goal of B is for everyone to get their share from the estate. The short-term goal, however, is to buy more time for him to pay off his loan. So how do we do that? How do we get more time for our client? The simple answer is to play defense. If A does not file a complaint for the partition of the estate, the apartment and the house and lot, then we will achieve our short-term objective. Lilipas ang panahon. May magbabayad ng upa sa apartment at makakabayad si B ng utang niya. Saka na natin paghatian. If A now files a complaint for the partition and in his complaint he says that C, the rich brother now based in Australia, no longer wishes to participate, then we will counter that. Ano ang counter doon? We will counter that with the motion to dismiss for failure to implead the indispensable parties. However, under the new the revised rules of civil procedure, this move is an invalid move. You cannot dismiss an action based on the failure to implead an indispensable party. An indispensable party is a party whose interest will be affected by the actions of the court. Going back to our earlier principle, the strength of a rule is always in its consequence. What is the consequence of our move? Our move will not result in the instant dismissal of the action for partition. Hindi madidismiss ang case dahil lang sinabi natin na hindi po na implied si C. Tuloy ang laban kapatid but this time the court will be forced to order A to implead or bring in C, the brother from Australia, as a party to the case. A now has two options. He can implead C as an indispensable party in the case. In which case, the court has to serve someone upon him, sa Brisbane pa, and this will take time. Since we are playing for B, and time is everything for B, we are getting our short-term objective. In some simple way, nananalo na tayo if we are lawyering for B. Now, if A plays the second option, then our team, Team B, can play the following options. Challenge the validity of the waiver or deed of donation. The second option for A is to present the waiver of C of his share in favor of both A and B. A can also present a deed of donation from C to A's favor, stating that C has given his share to A, your honor, hindi na po interestado yung kapatid namin sa mana niya. Heto po ang aking katibayan. If A plays that, we, tayo na team B, can, we have the following options. Challenge the validity of the waiver of deed of donation. Napaka-technical ng rules ng pagpapadala ng notaryadong dokumento mula sa ibang bansa pa uwi ng Pilipinas. Sa challenge pa lang na ito, buwan na naman ang bibilangin. Or, we have option 2. We can use Rule 17, Section 3. Again, the strength of a rule is always in its consequence. Sorry kapatid, paulit-ulit tayo. Kasi yun yung key takeaway, one big message of the evening. The strength of a rule is always in its consequence. This, 
This is why one of my favorite rules in the rules of court is Rule 17, Section 3, bukas ng kodal. It provides, among several other grounds, that the defendant may, upon his motion or upon the court's own motion, to dismiss a complaint from the plaintiff's failure to obey a lawful order of the court. Under either option of A, i-present niya yung deed of donation niya or hindi niya i-implead yung kapatid niya, Rule 17, Section 3 comes to play. Under either option of A, if he comes to court without impleading C, the brother in Australia, then we can always use Rule 17, Section 3. Kapatid, I hope you are starting to see the pattern here. Yung pattern ng mga moves, counter moves, at counter, counter moves sa civil procedure. It gets a bit more complicated, lalo na kung live tayo at wala tayong drawing. Pero okay pa ba so far? Moving on, let's assume that A was able to successfully implead C. Patay tayo dito. Aandar na ang kaso at malaki ang panalo ni A. Makukuha na niya ang share niya. However, the law also provides other remedies. If our goal for, if our goal for B is to buy more time, our client, then we can always pray, pray to the court to appoint B as the administrator of the estate during the pendency of the case. This means that if we plead that B is in the best position to take care of the estate, kahit habang pinag-uusapan lang natin ang hatian at kung walang administrator, ay baka mapabayaan po ang maintenance ng apartment. Barring a challenge from A or C, then, get B gets what, then B gets what he wants. He gets to live in the house and lot and he gets to borrow the rentals to pay off his loans. Knowing what we now know on the case, on this problem, if we were to start all over again, best option ba natin ang partition? Going back, if we are the counsel for A, if we were to play all over again, what would be the best course of action? Kung uulitin natin, tama ba ang ginawa natin na partition agad? Why? Your answer is no. Why? When you look at this case, based lang dun sa facts, there are better options. Most money, less time. When you look at this case, there are better options than coming to court to partition the estate. Sure, we can do that. Pwedeng, pwedeng maging option yon. Dagdag mo pa dito yung administration ng proceedings. Pwedeng isabay niya sa action for partition niya ang ma-appoint siya na administrator. A can come to court, ask the court to divide the property, but in the meantime, appoint him as the administrator to block any possible mismanagement from B or C. But I think that the shortest, simplest path to get to point A, having nothing, point A being wala tayong having nothing and getting to point B, which is getting the share of at least 3 million. First step, first step I think is to talk to the other heirs. A should talk to B and C. Pag-usapan nila ang hatian. Then we can execute an extrajudicial settlement of the estate. A, B, and C get their 3 million each and B can pay off what ever loan he has obtained from his share. This is covered by special proceedings, an entirely different course in remedial law, and one which I am excited to discuss in our future episodes. If A, B, and C agree to divide the properties among themselves, ano ang role ng court? Actually, wala. This brings me to my final point this evening. The rules of court will only begin to apply when the court acquires jurisdiction over the parties. Jurisdiction is the power of the court to resolve controversies brought before it. The judge cannot walk around looking for cases to resolve. Dismiss yan, dismiss yan. 
he has to wait until an actual case is brought before his court. For this reason, tip number five, learn everything about jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is conferred by law. It triggers the application of the rules of court. Without jurisdiction, none of the rules will apply. Jurisdiction will show you the process. Now, if you know the process and you know all of the moves and counter moves, then you will get a deeper understanding of remedial law. Thank you so much for watching, kapatid. Now let's open the floor for some Q&A. Habang nagta-type kayo ng mga questions nyo, I will make a brief summary. Number one, learn to spot issues in the context of remedial law. The worst answer is the answer that comes from substantive law. Number two, in remedial law, everything is essentially adversarial. There are two conflicting parties. It's the plaintiff versus defendant and occasionally you will be asked to rule on the case. Very rare lang naman ito. If the action of the judge is procedurally correct. Tatlo lang ang itinatanong. If you were the counsel for the plaintiff, the counsel for the defendant, or if the court is correct. Number three, paulit-ulit, the strength of the rule is always in its consequence. There are rules that provide instant wins or instant dismissals. Sila yung tipong tanos ng ating rules. They provide instant wins. Look for them and learn them well. In remedial law, there are many ways to get from point A to point B. Your job is to learn the simplest, most efficient, If you know the process, your job is to learn the simplest, most efficient, and most accurate way possible. Finally, jurisdiction is everything in remedial law. If you know the process and you know all possible moves in every stage of the process, then it's going to be very hard for you to lose. Now, let's answer some questions. Recommended books. I think that the gold standard, at least for remedial law, until and unless there are... The gold standard for remedial law, I think it's still Dean Riano's work. Still has the best, clearest, most concise, simplest explanation... However, the book is not updated in light of the new of the revisions in the rules of court. Probably there will be better options for Spec Pro. There are a lot of good options. Walang mali for Walang mali for Spec Pro. All of them about in the same footing. Preliminary investigation, that's a topic for another session siguro. Happy to discuss that with you. Dean Albano has an updated one. Okay, probably deserves a good uh, read. I think that's it for me. Maraming salamat. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Karma. And I will see you next Friday.